Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. We have our friend from Better Business Bureau. That must mean it's Tiffany. Tiffany Schultz back and ready to rock your socks. We each month for the last, wow, it's been a year and a half now since we started the business tips, right? About that. Yeah, man, that's cool. So each uh, month we take on a couple of consumer topics and then we take on a business topic because Better Business Bureau also works with businesses. Shocker, it's in the name. Uh, so uh, we are going to talk about what to know about taxes when starting up a business. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of information here. So we're going to glorify, go over the, the top of this, but... You're going to want to do some research as you go through this, but uh, starting a new business, um, a lot of things you need to know uh, before you get started uh, because you just might not know. If you've made the switch from being employed by somebody to your own business, there's going to be a lot of tax implications that you want to know about up front before you go ahead and start your business versus after the fact or when you're going through it and you find out, oh, I have to pay taxes for this, I have to pay taxes for that. Do your homework up front and know exactly what you're going to have to pay. That'll help you in the long run. Yeah, the first mm -hmm. tip here is start thinking early about taxes. And it, it's true because ugh, that just comes up quickly. And uh, I can tell you it's not easy to close out all that paperwork. So when they say start early, start early. Start before April 15th. You oh, not on April 15th? Not oh, April I thought 15. that was the day you start. <laughs> you don't want to be surprised. And we're going to talk about legal entities a little bit later in the show. And that's really going to determine what your tax inflammation is going to be. So be prepared that you are going to have to pay taxes more than just sales tax for your goods and services that you sell. There's other taxes that are associated with a business and know that up front. Know that they can change the timing and quarterly payment. Oh my gosh, I can tell you a whole bunch of fun stories. Uh, understand how your business structure uh, impacts your taxes. I think this is kind of where you're going with this. So what do we want to know uh, when we're picking that structure? Because that does have tax implications. This is what's called your legal entity. And you can file this right through the state of Wisconsin website, WDFI. There's multiple options when you choose a legal entity. Do you want to be an LLC? Do you want to be a sole proprietor? Do you want to be an S Corp? Or do you want to be one of the other options that are available to you? You should talk with your accountant before you choose one of them, as all of them have different tax implications before you get started. Yeah, it's kind of complicated because, it, you know, you look at them and you're like, oh, maybe I fall under this category. But then you talk to someone and you're like, yeah, that's not you. And you're like, but no. You take trust, take the trust from uh, from somebody who knows what they're talking about. Uh, find out if you need an EIN number. What does that mean? You're going to be needing an EIN number if you have more than yourself that's employed or if you file one of these certain legal entities. So if you're operating as a sole employee, proprietor, if you're operating as an LLC and it's just you, you can usually get by with just using your social security number for tax purposes. However, if you have at least one employee, you're going to need that EIN number. And again, you should work with your accountant on how to get that. Plan for income tax. What? <laughs> Planning? No way. It's a necessary evil, right? We it get is. taxed on everything. So um, you're going to need that to file your tax return, and your structure is going to determine which forms you use and which ones you file. So that income tax, you know, you get taxed out of your regular paycheck, you're going to get taxed on your business too. You sure? I'm positive. <laughs> uh, account for <laughs> employment taxes as well. This one is it's its own entity. Let me tell you, that's it is a you you definitely want to do the research here. Yep. So you know when you get your paycheck from an employer and you get those tax deductions, your employer is actually paying those taxes. So you will see tax deductions for Social Security, Medicare taxes, um, and some of those other things that really don't make sense sometimes. As a business owner, you also have to pay those. Yeah, employment tax is the big one there that uh, you probably hear the most as a business owner. Or you will learn if you are just starting out uh, what that all means. Uh, find out if you need uh, to pay property taxes. Also big. So you've got your yep. property. Are you renting? Do you own it? What does that mean? If you have a physical location, you may have to pay property taxes just like you would on your own real estate that you live in. Look at your lease. Are your property taxes included in your lease or is that a separate line item with your landlord? You may have to pay that separately. 
Next one is a good one here. If you sell goods uh, under uh, sales tax laws, you got to pay the sales tax. And you definitely want to do your homework on this one. Definitely. So if you sell those goods and services, you put a line item on there that you charge the consumer 5.5% sales tax, right? Or whatever the tax rate is. You collect that on behalf of your business and then you pay that to the government. Yeah, and you want to know if it's like if it's a nonprofit versus a regular. I mean, again, you're responsible, solely responsible for collecting that and making sure you have those things up front, which leads me to keeping good records. <laughs> keeping good records is imperative. So when you bill somebody, you're going to want to make sure that you have the correct charges on there because if you undercharge them, especially for the taxes, you're going to have to pay that to the government regardless if you want to or not. You're also going to want to keep good records on the business expenses you have, any invoices that you paid, because you will want to take advantage of those deductions at the end of the year. There's also something called audit. So you want to have all of those things ready to go if you are going to be facing an audit. Uh, so nevertheless, maybe to the final point, this is where you may want to consider hiring an accountant or tax preparer because it is, it, it, I laugh, but it is pretty complicated stuff. The rules are changing constantly. And it is a lot of stuff to keep up. In a small business, you're responsible for everything. So you kind of might need that help. Get somebody on board early. We recommend that you do your homework before you do business with a company. You can find accountants and tax preparers. A good place to start is BBB.org. Always interview multiple people. Choose who you want to work with. It's really important that you're comfortable working with them, but that you've also done your homework on them too to know that they are a legitimate company. I don't feel scared. I mean, this is scary stuff to talk about. And when you're getting into it, I think this is the big concern when you start a business, not just about, hey, I got to make some money, but, you know, how to take care of all these things. But there's certainly a lot of resources out there with BBB being a good spot to start to answer some questions. And you're not alone out there. A lot of people face this. And if you are a new business owner, find an accountant who works with those small businesses who can take you step by step through the process. It'll make it that much easier for you. It could get, it's called counseling. <laughs> <laughs> you might need it as a small business owner for sure. All right. Well, I appreciate the time and uh, we'll check back in next month. Thanks for having me.